Hey YouTube, welcome back to my data structures in TypeScript series. In this video, we're going to go over circular buffers. A circular buffer is a single fixed size buffer which is connected from end to end. Other names for this abstract data type are circular queues, cyclic buffers, and ring buffers. The way it works is similar to a queue. It has first in, first out ordering. And circular buffers can be implemented with overriding enabled or disabled. If it is disabled, then it's just a fixed size queue and you there's, there's no dynamic sizing. It's just a fixed size. But the other more common approach when implementing circular buffers, because you'll get into a benefit, which I'll get into in the next slide, is with overriding. And in the sense, you can think of it as a queue that pushes out the first elements that's about to be served and then of course the the client doesn't get a chance to read that value before it gets pushed out. So you can see from the diagram below there's on the bottom right of the picture there's a read pointer and write pointer and whenever we're writing we advance the red pointer and whenever we're reading we advance the blue pointer. So there's an opportunity for the red pointer to overwrite stale data that hasn't been read yet. Circular buffers are common data structures that are frequently used when the input and output to a data stream occur at different rates. So for example, if someone is some sort of data source can be writing to some sort of buffer. And in this diagram I pulled from NetNinja, this, there's this buffer which can be thought of internally as this ring. And you can think of this of the person writing to the buffer as some sort of data source and the person reading from it some sort of destination. And circular buffers are good when you need to read and write at different rates. So it allows you to buffer data. And if you have overwriting enabled, it allows you to have a fixed sized buffer, which doesn't grow too big, um, given that you're okay with overwriting stale data. So the way we represent the circular buffer is, of course, there's no actual data structure that's cyclic or circular like that in any programming language. So we got to use pointers to implement this sort of ring or circular cyclic behavior ourselves. So we have two in indices, read, in read, read index and write index, and they represent what they, what they say in their names. Read index represents the element where we should pull the pull the element from. So you can think of the read index as the front of the queue, the one the item that's about to be pulled off. And write index you can think of as the back of the queue, which is the um, position of the array where we should actually insert elements. So going with the example, let's say we, want, we wanted to enqueue three. Well, we're going to enqueue three at the write index right here. We're going to insert three and then we're going to advance write index for the next operation, for the next enqueue operation because we don't want to keep write index remaining here because then it would overwrite three. So we want to actually advance it for the next write operation. But we leave the read index pointer because the we, we haven't DQ three. So when we DQ three, read index will be ready to DQ three at that location. So here is the the array and, and the pointers and the state this is from the previous slide. And let's enqueue eight. So we're going to enqueue eight into this element or this box where write index is pointing at and then advance it to the next to the next one. And notice how read index has not changed because we haven't dequeued anything from the from the uh, circular buffer. So here again, this is what we have and we're going to enqueue negative five. Again, we're going to place negative five, insert negative five into the array where write index is pointing at and then advance the pointer for the next enqueue operation. Here, we're going to dequeue the first element, we're going to DQ the first element that read index is pointing to. So either we look at read index, we, we return the value of three, and then we advance the read index. And we don't have to do anything to the three, we're not going to set it to null or some sort of falsy value because it'll be eventually overwritten by the write index. So let's go to the next example. We're going to enqueue 29. So here up above, write index is pointing to the next spot where we want to write to. So we're going to enqueue 29 and then we're going to advance it. But since it's out of the array, we're going to circle it back to the first element. And notice here that even though we have three, this will be overwritten by the next enqueue operation. So that's why we didn't need to set it to null. 
So of course we're going to in Q46. So right index is pointing at the first element zero, and then we're going to overwrite it with 46. And then at this point, right index is on the same pointing to the same uh, space of same location as read index. So this is our current state. Read index and write index are pointing to the same element, and we're going to in Q17. So because we in Q17, we're going to Place 17 where write index is pointing to, but then we since read index and write index are pointing to the same element, we have to advance both pointers over written eight. So the next value for us to read is not 17 because this is the, the last one that has been put up. The first one after eight has been negative five. So here we want to start dequeuing elements and we dequeue, and then what the dequeue operation is going to pull the element that read index is pointing to. So it's pointing at negative five. So we return negative five right there. And then we advance the pointer to the next element, which is 29. If we DQ again, we return 29 and then advance read index. And since it's out of the array size, then it's it's beyond, it's, it's greater than the max size of the array. Then we circle back and uh, place read index to the first element. So that's an overview of how in queuing and dequeuing work with the circular buffer. And since a circular buffer is under the hood, uses a linked list, then we get the same time complexities as a queue and stack. In queue and DQ, peak front and peak back are all constant time operations. So keep in mind that circular buffers are similar to stacks and queues, such that they are wrappers around list-like data structures like arrays and linked lists, with the with invariants that control the with the ordering of insertion and deletion. So with the circular buffer, if we go back to the first diagram. The circular buffer says that if you are going to write elements when the when the when the buffer is full, I'm gonna overwrite the the first the oldest element that has been put in. So yeah. So yeah, that was a overview of circular buffers. And in the next video, we will go over the implementation for this data structure. I'll see you in the next video.